Welcome back to Great Beer Disc Golf. I'm very excited. I've got another brand new disc for us today, and it's in the same slot as probably my favorite disc ever. It's the brand new Drop from Discmania. The Nicholas Antila Creator Series Overstable Approach Disc in the Color Glow Sea Line plastic. The flight numbers on this are 4303. This one weighs in at 173 grams. And it's kind of a curious disc because I thought that in the tactic, this mania already had an overstable approach disc. But I guess they wanted something to kind of slot right in and compete directly with the Star Zone. Okay, maybe, okay, not the Star Zone. <laughs> the regular zone. So this is my regular zone. This is my precious child, uh, as Robbie C. would put it. I've got that to compare today. Again, the numbers on the stars on the regular zone as well are 4303. And you know what? And I'm going to throw this one to today too. This one's from Timu. This is their, their knockoff of the zone. They call it the star zone. I'm sure we'll see some uh, legality around that at some point. But I've also got Discmania's own direct competition to this. And the Razor Claw 3, the Tactic. Now, the Tactic's available in a bunch of different plastics. Uh, but I've got it in the Razor Claw version today. The Razor Claw is only 4203, so slightly less glide. Well, let's find out. How are they all going to fly? The basket out there between the trees is about 210 feet. Let's see if we can't get close with these. We're going to start with the drop. Now, as an overstable approach, I can put this a little bit wide right and have a crash at the basket. Ah, that's a putt, absolutely. All right, Zone, your turn. Oh, a little too wide. It still crashed a bit. Didn't fall back nearly as much as it usually does. Maybe that's getting beat in. All right, Razor Claw. Let's try to get you on the right line here. Oh, that's better. That hooked up pretty quick. And last but not least, the star zone. This has got a little bit of a wow in it, you can see. The package came with a bit of a bump in it, so I'm not sure how exactly this is gonna fly. But the plastic feels really good. This kind of their, their version of Jawbreaker feels quite nice. Oh, that push, that did not, that pushed quite a bit further. I mean, distance-wise, it didn't go a lot further, but it certainly looked like it pushed, pushed, pushed out before it crashed. Very interesting. So obviously my zone, I, I shanked it a bit. It scared me a bit because I did that once on this hole and ended up in the river and it sat in the river for over a year. A little more of a putt than I wanted, but... Now, now that's a fairly good grouping. All three of those, give me a look. I think they do, yeah, a little bit around the corner. Oh, not quite. Well, here you go. It certainly feels like it comes out flatter than both the zone and the drop and the razor claw. So one of the things about the zone that really drew me to this slot specifically was my ability to put it on a forehand. And for a brand new player, I was able to forehand this disc with, with some consistency and be able to get it pretty much where I wanted. So we're going to go back at the bag. You can see it back there be, beside uh, the car. Again, we're still about 200, 210 feet out. Uh, let's see if we can't get close. A little bit of Anheuser, flexed it out. Beautiful. Great flight, got all the way there. Zone, you're up. Oh, I missed my line on that again. Razor Claw 3. A little bit of flex again. Beautiful. 
exactly what I want that thing to do. I'm a little worried about flexing this guy out. I don't think it's, I think it might burn it over. It's, it's quite a bit more flexible. <clears throat> But again, you see that push forward. It held the line and still had to finish. And once again, still the better shot of the four. So one of the things that makes this disc so amazing and, and this slot so amazing is, is its, its ability to kind of end up in the same spot if you throw it on several different lines, as long as you know what you're doing. So just like any disc, throw it a ton, get out there and, and learn exactly what it does and then you can use it. This is a usable disc for just about anybody, I think. Just about anybody could take this disc, put it in their bag, and have it be a benefit, to have it help them save strokes. That's, that's what you really want. There we go. There, there's the drop. My zone way the heck over here. My zone. Maybe, maybe Precious Baby is pouting. So let's head out into the course and find some fun shots to throw. All right, to start off on the course, we've got a pretty straightforward hyzer shot here. This hole plays about 195 feet straight away. The play for me is to put it out over the path and have it crash at the basket. And we're gonna wait for our dog walker to get out of the way because we don't want to hit the puppy. This is a multi-use park and we try to be uh, good neighbors. So we're gonna start off with the drop. I should crash at the basket. That's okay. Up on the side of that hill there is not a bad place to be. It'll stop it and we should have a putt. All right, next, zone. Precious child, as Robbie C would say. Very, very similar line. Ooh, I think I hit that last tree, wild. But still got me close, so. Uh, next, we're gonna do the tactic razor claw this thing feels very different in the hand i know it's basically in the same slot a little bit less glide but this feels very much deeper in the in the hand shank it a little bit more straight but again hooked up for sure should give me still a putt. Last but not least, the star zone. All right, four different lines, four different shots, but we should have a putt with every single one of them. Okay, so if you're a zone thrower, you know exactly what I'm gonna do here. I have, uh, unfortunately, Shanked my drive, um, hit a tree, and ended up there. Oh no, what am I to do? Well, luckily, I've got these beautiful discs in my bag. And I'm going to start off with the drop. So if you're not a zone thrower, what I'm trying to do here is to put this out on a, on a fairly steep Anheuser and then just have it kind of float and drop at the basket. That's one of the things that I love about the overstable approach disc in this category is that it makes it fairly easy to do this you can see the basket down there i'm probably about 100 feet away i just want to put it up around that tree and miss that branch and drop let's see if we can get you there okay missed my line a little bit but that's still a putt that's still pretty good all right zone you're next let's see uh let's see this thing this is a workhorse this disc Too much anti, oh, too much anti, a little bit too much welly as well. That went a long way. Okay, tactic. One of the things about this tactic too is it feels a lot deeper in the hand. This uh, finger goes in quite a bit further. You can immediately feel that. Oh no, missed it all together. We're gonna try that one again. Much better. Bite out. Get there. Again, a little bit deep. That's one of the problems I have with this forehand approach is that my body tends to want to run it. 
<laughs> so, okay, and Star Zone. No copyright infringement here. Missed my line again. Not nearly enough Anheuser. We'll try that one again one more time. Okay. Low, but it sure fought out. That actually was probably the better of the bunch. All right. Let's go have a look. All right. Let's see if I can remember where everything went. There's, uh, there's our drop. Pretty close. It's a putt. How many paces is this? One, three, four, five, 15, 15, 16, 17, 18 feet. And pretty much everything else, I think, went a bit further. There's the star zone, the regular zone, and then and the tactic as well. So I wanted to talk a little bit about what the zone means to me, not just as a, as a, a slot in my bag, but as a disc. It, I got a zone, a really beautiful zone from a friend probably one of the first discs that was actually gifted to me and he was showing me how to use it and it was the probably the first disc that as a real beginner and I'm talking a real beginner I felt like I could shape a shot with it's slow enough and it's overstable enough that generally the shots you're going to throw with it are overstable and you want them to, to crash hard. And so I was able to do that with that. And it gave me a lot of confidence as a new player. And I want to talk a little bit about one of the things that this bag slot does specifically for new players is it kind of leans into that typical nose up throw that a lot of new players have naturally. Now, one of the things I've noticed with the people that I've you know introduced to disc golf, people that I've shown disc golf and, and the brand new players that, that, uh, that I've played with, they tend to throw nose up. Nose angle is probably, I, I think is probably the number one issue for new players. It's not rounding, it's not foot placement, it's not, you know, collapsing the power pocket. It's that they throw nose up and that kills everything. You could put the most unders, you could put a function, you could put a, a, a rollo in the hands of an amateur player. And if they're throwing it nose up, it's gonna, it's gonna hyzer out and it's gonna crash away. So I think, the nice thing about this slot specifically is that it plays into that. It's kind of what you want it to do. You want to put it nose up. You saw on those big shots in the field and on that tee shot, you kind of want to put it out a little bit nose up and then it will do that shot for you. All right, so now we've got another one here. I'm looking up the hill from the drop zone. We're at hole nine here. Now, this does not play as the toughest hole on the course, but I believe it is, <laughs> even though it doesn't really, the numbers don't show that. Uh, you've got a mando that we missed, so I've come to the drop zone. The drop zone here is a fairly simple up shot. It's just a straight little forehand. We want to flop it on the ground. The miss here is if you get it up on edge at all, it's going to roll away a long way down the hill. So that's what I want to try to prevent with this shot. I want to stop it from rolling away. I want it just to land as flat as I can. So... I'm going to put this on an Anheuser. I'm going to flex it out. I'm throwing uphill, so that means it's going to behave even more overstable. Let's see if we can get the drop close. Oh, not quite. All right, zone, here we go. Get it up a little bit higher. Flattened out on the side of the hill. Perfect. That's a putt. Tactic, you're next. And you saw it bounce on the hill, but it didn't flip up. That's what I want out of this. Oh, that one worked out. Excellent. Let's go have a look at those. There's the drop right there again. Not a bad spot to be. And everything else is right there doing exactly what I want them to do. Good job, Jess. Good job. All right. So here I'm going to kind of make up a shot. Um, Let's assume, for the sake of argument and the review, that on the right side here, there is a wall of trees or branches or jail or whatever. In this situation, normally, if I was right here, I would put my zone out like that and just have a crash of the basket. But I don't want to do that. I'm going to pretend that there's trees here because I want to look at how to get through this little gap with this approach disc to kind of show you how you can shape things differently. Now, I can't just, if I'm stuck back here, 
I can't just forehand this. I've got those three trees on the left side that are blocking me from having a really a, a, a clean line at it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to flex it on a backhand. We'll go, we'll even go with a patent pending. And I just want to flex it back and have it settle at the basket. How far are we? Let's have a quick look at that. Not that far. Thirty-five. So we're about a hundred and we're about ninety-five, ninety, hundred and five feet. All right. Let's give ourselves a little bit more snooker here. All right. Oh, uh, we're gonna start with the drop. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Well, not perfect, but pretty damn good. A little bit, a little bit long, but you saw it flex out. Nice line on the zone, Mr. Tactic. Let's see what you can do. Oh no! Oh, but it flexed out. A little bit short, and then star zone. Go straight at it. Oh, right at the base. All right. So three of the shots were a little bit different there. Four slightly different lines to the same effect. But you can see how it gives you that option to flex it around the tree and get that full flight out of it, even on a super soft, super short shot. All right, moving on. So an interesting thing there you saw with that specific shot. Four, well, mostly different shots. Four mostly different lines. To approach the basket to, but still basically all got to the same spot and what that says to me as an amateur as a beginner player is that this disc this slot specifically has something that we don't talk a lot about in disc golf you very rarely hear forgiveness we talk about it in ball golf a lot these clubs are forgiving that ball is forgiving um, for off center hits stuff like that now i threw all four of those discs basically slightly different a little bit higher a little bit lower might have uh, changed up the angle a little bit but they all pretty much got me to the spot that i needed to be so you can throw a not perfect shot with this especially at that short range and still end up in a position to give yourself a putt and that's what we're trying to do we're not necessarily trying to run the basket we're just trying to get ourselves in a spot where we can have a putt so this hole plays about 150 feet it's fairly short a forehand flick hole i mean i've seen people turn over short shots on this but for me the shot is such a, a short shot such a that that it's gonna everything i throw is gonna turn up a little more overstable than i want it so i could throw something like a paradox and it's not gonna quite follow the same flight that i want so for me the higher percentage shot is a flick all right let's give it a shot around that branch clip the branch a little bit and it just dropped right at the basket perfect all right zone you're up Let's see if we can keep this down a little bit oh no shank here we see the eternal struggle of the uh, amateur youtuber i love to show you how these thoughts are supposed to go the intention is to kind of show you what the disc is supposed to do but for me stringing together four decent shots in a row could be a struggle i try just get it right down that gap in the middle there all right third time's a charm There we go. Not crushing it. Although that one went pretty deep and it did roll deep. All right, tactic, you're up. Razor claw three. Good, a little bit of Annie, but it still had enough fight to get to the basket. Now star zone.
Check. Oh, okay. Well, that was going to finish off pretty well where we wanted it. Now, I want to make a quick note about putters. Now, this, there it is. This is a putt and approach disc. These are all kind of published as putt and approach discs. But I don't know anyone that putts with them to any great effect. I've seen people try to putt with them before, but it very seldom ever works out. They quickly go back to the regular putters. Oh, just about. So I don't see this as really a viable putter putter. Unless you get it super close. And the drop should have just dribbled over the lip of the hill here. Where are you, little drop? Short. It's been a bit short. <clears throat> whoa, whoa. All right, so it did did get to the basket. Uh, it, there it is, up on edge, of course. Luckily, the water hasn't risen, so this is still in bounds. There we go. Okay, we're going to try something a little more fun here. This hole is kind of a... It vexes a lot of players. I've seen everybody that I've ever played with miss the mando on this. It's a double mando, and it's a fairly snug double mando up there. Ideally, you just want to throw a putter straight. It's like 160 feet. It should be pretty simple. Just throw the disc straight. That's all you got to do. And you'll make the mando. No, it's not that simple. It's a pain in the butt. So, I've aced it. I've seen it aced on an overhand. So, I'm going to throw these on an overhand and see exactly how they behave. Now, these shouldn't move a lot left to right because they don't have a lot of glide. So I'm just going to chop it. I'm going to drill it straight at the basket. Not too high. Okay, so that went straight for sure. Didn't really get a lot of distance. That was the drop. Now we're going to do zone. Maybe put a tiny bit of... No, straight up right. And bounce, bounce. Not bad. That's still a putt. That's only about 10 or 12 feet. See how you go, Tactic. Okay, I missed my line. But again, straight, straight. Didn't move left to right much at all. Star Zone, you're up. Oh! But it did bounce when it hit. You saw that it bounced left. I think that was kind of consistent. Well, let's go see Made one of three. This hole still vexes me. Interesting note there. <laughs> All three of those ones that uh, missed the Mando, they technically didn't miss the Mando because they didn't even make it to the Mando. Again, weights on these discs are... I'll post them up here so you can see. Uh, the idea behind this is that I don't generally worry too much about max weight of an approach disc like this because I'm not really throwing it for distance. I'm not really trying to get as many feet out of it as I can. So here we have a hole that this drop should absolutely eat for breakfast. It's 181 feet, I think, 181 feet, hole number 17. Water carry, uh, not too worried about the water. But what I like to do on this hole is take it out really wide, wide and high, and just let it crash at the basket. Let's see if the drop can do that. Crash at the basket. Deep. That was a, that was a little bit lower than I thought I was um, than I, than I was trying to throw, but it certainly uh, certainly crashed at the basket. Uh, it just went a little bit too deep. All right, zone, your turn.
really wide, really high. It should make it all the way back to the basket. A little short, but right in line with where we want it to be. All right, tactic, your turn. Now the tactic doesn't have quite as much glide, or at least the numbers don't say that it has as much glide. So let's see if we can put it on a slightly lower line and still get there. There we are, right across the basket. <laughs> now, if that, as long as that didn't skip down the hill, because that hill kind of fades away into the river. All right, star zone. Let's see what you got. Get there, oh my goodness. All right, let's go have a look. All right, one of the nice things about this hole too is a 10... Shots tend to be closer than you expect. <laughs> but, okay, there's the star zone. Again, it was short. We knew it was going to be. There's my regular zone right there. Razor claw in the cabbage here. And then the star zone, or the uh, drop, would have gone deep. And I think that's because it has a little bit more glide. Not quite the same amount of hookup as the zone and the razor claw. All right, so let's uh, let's summarize a few things. Talk a little bit about these discs and uh, what what we think the purpose is. Obviously, Discmania believed that they had a gap in their lineup at the overstable approach disc, but did they really? The numbers on the razor claw and the tactic are four three four two zero three, whereas the numbers on the drop are four three zero three. But what I think what we're seeing, particularly with the big manufacturers in the struggle to release something new, to get some excitement and get people to buy new plastic, is the gap between their discs is starting to narrow. So they're getting more and more specialized. They're relying more on trying to find a number that suits it. And uh, I think that's one of the reasons why, obviously, Nicholas Antila needed this disc in his bag. And uh, he, he really wanted it. Now, I think the... Uh, the, the zone and the star zone as well. All four of these discs basically do the same thing. So why would you have one over the other? I don't see any reason to. When we were out in the field, we could see that there were some differences in the way that these discs flew. Minor differences. When we got into the course, however, those differences started to fade away. I think that when you're looking at a specific shot, all four of these discs could have done any one of those shots identical. If I had thrown every one of these on exactly the same line, they would have been suitable. They might not have landed all in exactly the same spot, but I think that they would have probably given me an opportunity to putt. And again, with this overstable approach slot, I'm not trying to pot a disc. I'm not trying to put it in. Well, maybe, <laughs> depending on the shot. But generally, my overstable approach slot is about I'm in trouble and I need to get out of trouble. So I'm going to try to get it to a point where I can at least have a putt. So the drop from Discmania, brand new disc. If you're a Discmania thrower and the tactic isn't for you, the, the feel in the hand of the tactic might be a little too deep. But no matter how you look at it, no matter which one of these you bag, if you decide you're going to bag a Timu bag uh, or you're going to go with Disc Mania or you're going to go with Discraft or any of the other 4303 discs. And I've kind of gotten into a habit now of collecting these, these 4303, these overstable approach discs, the clones of the zone. And I think I mentioned it before, I'm trying to put together a video of all the clones and comparison of them all. Uh, that keeps getting pushed back because I keep picking up more and stuff like this keeps dropping. So there's new versions coming out, but I think it's an important slot to have in your bag as a beginner or even as a, as a pro. I mean, many pros in disc wrap bag the zone and it's one of the discs that I bagged early on and I was able to use it too. So uh, it's, it's something that any player could use, whether it's a zone, whether it's a tactic, whether it's an star zone or an entropy or a horny toad any one of those discs if you don't have something like this in your bag i'm going to encourage you to go out find someone that does and head out into the field with them and take a few throws and find out exactly what you can do with this thing because it can be a super useful disc for you 
and it should help make you a better player for sure. All right, thanks for joining me here on Greybeard Disc Golf. Have a great day. While the sun's still shining, you see the leaves are starting to turn here. Autumn is fully upon us, and glow season's about to start, so I'm looking forward to that. And actually, this is, uh, as it's in the color glow, this might, <laughs> it glows way better than any zone I have, so I might, might put that in my glow bag and bump the zone out, which is uh, pretty amazing. All right, thanks again for joining me. Have a great day. Get out there, practice some putts. It'll make you a better player, and we'll see you next time here on Greybeard Disc Golf.